So the story takes a weird twist on Cinderella. It has two settings, World War II London and the fairy tale of Cinderella. At the beginning, it starts in London, 1939. This was during World War II. A girl named Roseanne is packing and hears her twin brother arguing with their mom. The argument is because they are being sent away to the countryside. Her brother, Jackson, doesn't want to go and ever since they found out, he has been misbehaving. This, this is based on Operation Pied Piper that was begun by the military in the UK. Over 100,000 teachers were given the task of gathering millions of children in London and transporting them to live in the countryside safely away from the war. At the beginning, it starts in London, 1939. This was during World War II. A girl named Roseanne is packing and hears her brother arguing with their mom. The argument is because they are being sent away the next day to the countryside. Her brother Jackson doesn't want to go. And since they had found out, he has been misbehaving. This is, this is based on Operation Pied Piper that was begun by the military in the UK. Over 100,000 teachers were given the task of gathering millions of children in London and transporting them to live in the countryside safely away from the war. After Jackson is done arguing with his mom, he goes to his bedroom that is shared with Rose. Soon, Rose is called down to the nursery of her three-year-old brother, Peter. She was called down by her nan, or otherwise known as Nana Victoria. Nana Victoria has something to give Rose. She gives her what looks like an old book. In the text, it says, It was heavy, and the brown cover was worn. The spine of the book was engraved with tiny gold diamonds. What caught my interest was the large gold title, The Truth of Fairy Tales. There was something so enticing about it, almost as if it were magic. Rose opens the book and for a second sees the word Cinderella. Her nan quickly notices and shouts at her, scaring her into shutting the book. In the text, it said, She scared me into sh quickly shutting it. I gave her a furious look. Nana Victoria, why can't I open, open a children's book? She composed herself, then quietly said, Do not take that tone with me, young lady. You can open it when I say so. Also, stop speaking so loudly your brother is sleeping. I gave her a confused look and think to myself, what just happened? Nana asked me, Roseanne, would you be a dear and go get Jackson? So here you see that Rose questioned her, but then she dodged it and sent her to get Jack. She gets Jack, and when they go to the nursery, she realizes she left the book there. In the nursery, Nana Victoria gives them an identical pair of keys. She explains they have been in the family for generations, and they are never to take them off. Nana, Victoria then explains the importance of family and how you should take care of them. A little bit later, you get more background on the family. In the text, it said, finally, she says. There's a third key, you know. The last person who had it was Ellen Adler Bohr. Great Auntie Ellen, I question. She nods. Yes. Perhaps one day you can get it and give it to Peter. Early in this story, Rose mentioned having an uncle named Neil, who taught her about the structure in Adam. This brings the conclusion that her family is related to Niels Bohr. Ellen Adler Bohr is the mother of Niels Bohr. And the sister of Anna Victoria. They are about to leave the nursery, but Anna says, To find home, follow the river. It's quite vague, but something she always says. No one knew why. When they get back to the room, Jack steals the book from Rose and, and teases her, saying he will open it. Rose finds out that Jack eavesdropped on part of a conversation with Nan. Then, in the text, it says, Jackson, don't. I'm ashamed to say that I tackled him. He then fell into his bed and kicked me away. Jack, don't read it. He then read out loud page one. Find the truth and you shall be set free. What the bloody hell does that mean? Jackson, give me the book, I said dead serious. He tossed me the book and said, fine. Rose, I don't get why you're getting so upset over a book, I sighed. Honestly, I don't know myself. I don't know, all right? Nan said no. Also, since we left, it's like an instinct not to. Hey, what's the writing on the back? He pointed to the back of the book. What? Look. There was writing on the bottom, on the bottom of the cover of the book. It says, to find home, follow the river to the purple leaf tree. Jackson looks confused for a moment. 
That's what Nan tells us, all the time. Except the purple leaf thing. I nodded, right. Well, she probably took it from here. Let's just go to bed. After they go to bed, the book starts to glow. And then, after some panicking, Rose wakes up, thinking it was a horrid dream. Soon, she notices her round her surroundings and then sees her reflection in the text it says i studied my reflection and tried to keep myself calm this girl had fiery red hair which contrasted to my usual blonde hair her eyes were blue like mine and had a porcelain skin which was a lot white lighter than my normal skin she looked about my age 16. her figure was petite like mine was it she or i Then a woman came in and called her Isabel. After questioning the woman in what seemed to the woman like a game, she learned that the name of the person she looks like is Isabel Ann Brown, and she is 16. That woman is Isabel's mom, and she has a brother. Soon, she heard a scream and figured Jackson was there. She finds Jack, and after calming him down, she catches him up on what happened. Then in a text it said, Jackson ran his hand through his hair. Okay, so you're Isabel, but who am I? I don't know your name here. His eyes widened a bit. Okay, that's fine, but I'm never reading again. What do you mean? Well, it's obvious. Nan told you not to open the book, but you and I both did. Then it started glowing, and we wake up here. We're in some fairy tale land. Then it actually made sense, and realization hit me. The keys, those are how we're going to get home. His hand shot to his chest. And he felt the key. They're still here. Well, do we have to figure out which keyhole to use? I rolled my eyes. Don't be absurd. There must be a million keyholes just in this house. What happens if we go out? Do you expect to try every keyhole you see? Oh, well, do you have any better ideas? He said with a disappointed tone. Well, you read the book. Does, did it say anything? I only read a page, Rose. And it said, find the truth and you will be set free. What truth? Then it hit me. The cover of the book says the truth about fairy tales, and it talks about the truth when you first open it. It is clear we have to find the truth of whatever the story is. He frowned. Well, then what story are we in? I thought about it. The woman talked so much I didn't recognize any of the setting. I'm not sure. He looked deep in thought and then said, wait, where are we going again? The Tremaines. His face lit up a bit. I know that name, but from where? I know it now, Cinderella. Earlier I opened the book, and I could only see Cinderella, so the book must have brought us here. The Tremaines is Lady Tremaine and Daughters, the evil stepfamily. I looked for Jack's reaction, but he stayed neutral, so I continued. To find the truth means that we, maybe there is something about the story we don't know, and we have to find it. Perhaps once we do, we will teleport back home. He shook his head. We came with nothing but our key state. We need them to get back home. That reminds me. On the back of the book, it said to find home, follow the river to the purple leaf tree. We need to find a purple tree and a river. Once we find the tree, the keys will take us home. Or maybe we have to unlock the tree, like a doorway. I nodded my head. You're right. Now find something to wear for tea with the evil stepmother. I left the room and went to mine. Everyone's then prepared to go to the Tremaines, and Rose learns Jack's name here is Parker. They arrive at the Tremaines, and the meeting is quite awkward. The stepmother and Lady Brown, Isabel's mom, left them with the stepsisters and Cinderella. They decide to take a walk, and at first it was silent, but then they find out about the death of Lady Tremaine's husband. Jackson then talks to the stepsisters, and Rose tries talking to Cinderella. In the text during Rose, Rose's conversation with Cinderella, it said, I walked behind with Cinderella, so I tried talking to her. Hey, Cinderella? It felt so strange to say that. I'm sorry about your father. She shrugged. He wasn't my father. I was confused, but Lady Tremaine said, they were talking about her latest husband, who got stabbed to death on the way home from, from a pub. This shocked me, but what about your father? He died three years ago. Six months later, Lady Tremaine married that horrid man. So here you learn that it was Lady Tremaine's husband, 
well, third husband, and Cinderella's stepfather that was murdered. The next morning, Rose wake up, woke up, and she was thinking, like, she thought it was a dream, but then she realized that she's still in this fairy tale land. Then in the text it says, Okay, where do I start? I asked myself. Jack, you could be a great help, I thought. I sneaked around the corridors, making sure not to be seen. I reached a door that seemed familiar. I carefully opened it, and there was Jack, still asleep. I was so excited that I had no regard for his slumber, and I shook him awake. Jack, I mean Parker. I said. I gave him no time to answer. We have to find out who murdered Cinderella's stepfather. He looked at me with an expression of, are you kidding me? Now, he said. Yes, the sooner we find out, the sooner we make it back. Now get up, I insisted. Go look for suspects or something. Interrogate people. I'll stay here, he said sleepily. Fine, I snapped at him. I left his room and closed the door. Later that day, Rose and Jack were to go to the Tremaines again. They saw this as their chance to investigate. And in the text it said, this was our chance to interrogate, but it had to be done inconspicuously. Do you miss your father? John, I asked the stepsisters. We really do. He was the best father in the world. It's so unfortunate what happened to him, especially since we don't know who the killer was, said Audrey bitterly. And how did Cinderella stand with him? She hated him. She had no reasons to. I would go as far as to say she had some sort of mental issues. After a while of talking, I had a good idea of what happened. John was despised by Cinderella and loved by all others. He had, he had left to the local pub at around 6 o'clock. And after two hours of not having heard from him, Lady Tremaine went to investigate. Apparently, she thought he had wandered off drunk again. When, walk, when she was walking by a stream, she could not help but notice small objects in the distance. Despite her fear of rats, she went off to investigate. She was shocked to discover her husband's ship. As she bent over to pick it up, she noticed a small trail of blood. It led to a small bridge. She let out a blood-curling scream that was heard throughout the village. It was her husband who lay dead, stabbed beneath the bridge. So here you get an idea of what happened to John. He was stabbed and left under a bridge. Um, you also can see that Cinderella didn't like him. So next, Jack and Rose decided to interrogate Cinderella, which didn't go well. In the text, when they asked her, she said, I loved him, she said. He, he was like my own father to me. This was certainly puzzling. How did you feel about his murder, I asked, calmly. I cried on day's end. I could barely do any chores. The more I asked, the further away I seemed to stray from the answer. Everything she said contradicted what we had learned so far. How did you receive the news of his death? Asked Jack. Are you interrogating me? She snapped at us. Because it really seems like it. And I recommend you go back to your own tea party and worry about your problems. That concluded our interrogations. Or so it seemed. So in the text, that's what it said. And Cinderella acts like she really loved him and she was like a father to him to her but earlier she said what a horrid man so you can't really know rose and jack decided to stay behind because lady brown lived close by then they saw a farmer in ragged clothes but he was holding a wagon with a beautiful slipper, a beautiful glass slipper. Then they decided to go talk to the farmer. Their conversation in the text said, excuse me, I asked him, could you be so kind as to tell us where you found that slipper? I found it and have been trying 
to sell it for years now, but no one seems to buy it because it came from a murderer. And as you can see, I have had no luck today. Jack looked curiously at the slipper. Murderer, you say? Asked Jack. Yes. I was in a wagon about a few months ago with a few other people when we heard a scream. We saw a young girl running through the forest away from the town. She dropped this. He picked up the slipper and gave us a closer look. Before he continued, the slipper was clearly of much value and could be stripped of its precious jewels lining the sides. And the, and the news spread like wildfire once we knew about the murder. The slipper became useless. Here in the official report, it says nothing about a young woman running through the forest. Doesn't concern me, he shrugged and almost continued along the road when I asked, how much for the shoe? He looked at us as if it were a joke. I noticed Jack was about to protest when I told him to see if he could find 26 pounds. This just gets more, more interesting every time we ask, said Jack after we acquired the shoe, and I couldn't help but agree. The next day, Jack and Rose once again returned to Lady Tremaine's door. They then sat down at a table with Audrey and Catherine, and they asked them if they had ever seen the shoe. Audrey tried on the shoe, and so did Catherine, and it fit Catherine for it perfectly. They then decided to speak to Cinderella, who was in the library, and they decided to go interrogate her. They find Cinderella and decide to question her. And in the text it said, Then I noticed Cinderella, or rather, her shoes. They were much larger than the slipper. I see I found Audrey's slipper, she said as she pointed at the slipper in Jack's hand. Audrey's slipper? he asked, baffled. Yes. She replied dryly. I could not help but look around when a letter in a small bag of what seemed to be coins caught my attention. I slowly made my way towards it, pretending to gaze at the books. Jack must have known I was up to something, as he kept her in entertained. I was only perhaps a meter away when I froze. A certain book title caught my attention. Cinderella. I was baffled. I could barely think properly when I managed to read as the following. When I managed to read the letter, titled, A Simple Warning, it read as the following, I have written this letter to you, Cinderella, to give you one last chance to pay the money. It shall be paid by the end of next month. If you fail to do so, I will find a way to leak the information concerning the slipper and much more without incriminating myself. I was scared slightly when Cinderella ripped the paper from my grasp. So, there's a letter, but it doesn't say from who and it concerns Cinderella, and she's in debt because of the slipper. Next, in the text, Rose adds up everything in her mind, and she finds out what happened to John. It says in the text, It's too late, I said in a teasing manner. As she walked towards the fireplace, I couldn't help but notice her shoes kept slipping. You murdered John when he was on his way back from the pub. You must have lured him near the bridge when you killed him. You heard your stepmother shouting for John and decided to flee the forest. That is when you lost your slipper, which was later reported to the investigator, whom you bribed shut. She did not look at all as amazed as cons or as concerned as I thought. And as for that book, I pointed dryly at the book, Cinderella. I see you have found my book, she said, wryly. And as for the book, she said in an irritating, imita imitating manner. Why don't you get a closer look? She pulled out the book, and to my surprise, she threw it at my face. I woke up frantically from side to side. I looked over to my right, and there was Jack in his normal form. Good to be back, I whispered. Him. To my surprise, he answered confusing, confusingly, asking, 
What are you talking about? 